Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about armor and weapons and how they all work and what you guys should know about them. So the first thing we're going to do is showcase that I am level 59 right now in Chronopolis. So if we take a look here, level 59 at Chronopolis, it'll showcase all of the levels of the monsters you currently have unlocked. So 34 is Maul Chest, and then you can see here Gibbering Sewer Fend, uh, Fiend is level 79. So you can see of all the levels before you get to those areas, uh, or without pulling out the map. So the first thing I want to kind of showcase here is... If you start an attack, which I definitely have to do because I'm kind of undergeared for this area, if you start an attack with a ranged, you can actually just left click backwards and he'll just completely kite this perfectly for you. So always do this in a harder fight, kite back perfectly. Um, when you're out of ammo, of course, turn it to melee, walk forward, it'll automatically do that for you and start attacking. One thing you should also note before we talk about some of the armor and weapons, the very, very important stuff, by the way, uh, you should actually take a look at your character. So if you click your character in the top left while you're in combat, it'll tell you what you're vulnerable to, it'll tell you your equipment, it'll tell you your combat level and your faction. So the very important one here is you're vulnerable to. Um, that'll tell you what monsters, you, why you're getting beat up by certain monsters and what monsters you're better against. And also clicking the tiger image. Let me attack one more for you guys so you have a reference here. Um, I like to go about four spaces back, left click the tiger, and then click backwards and do it that way. But if you click the tiger here, you're actually going to be able to see the attacks with Crane. Uh, he's immune to Crane as well. And then you can also see he's vulnerable to Tempest Day. So it's really nice that my weapon actually does Tempest Day damage because it is vulnerable to Tempest Day. So when it does do that Tempest Day damage, it does a lot of damage. So one thing you'll realize is I'm the same level as those Tigers. The only difference is, is I have really bad gear when it comes to level. So if you look here, my Hammer Fist is level 22. My Bolas, my range attack is level 16. My uh, Two Hand is level 16. That's what I'm actually using too. So I'm basically using two level 16 weapons that I got back all the way in the uh, starting area in uh, Hopeport. So it's crazy that I'm still using this stuff. But also, if you look at my armor, I have some armor that's really bad too. So my shield is level 25. I just got first my first actually decent item um, was from these tigers. It was level 59 torso. And you can see here my resistance is on average are about 100, which is really, really good across the board. You can also look at some of my other uh, pieces of gear, which is if you look at the legs, this is going to be a level 39. Going to give me about average of 80 five-ish probably on resist which is pretty good but i want to showcase what you can do to get better armor and better weapons very very easily if you're in episode four you need to actually go into the chronopolis town gates and when you get to this episode you can walk right into the armory which is the blade Drix armory and you can not only buy back gear you've sold by the way, this is a very, very nice place to actually sell all of your stuff, all your drops from combat because it's kind of close to everything. So if you look here, zombies are here. If you look over here, the saber two tigers are here. Those are the two main mobs that I attack. So because of that, I do like to go to Blade Drix quite a bit to sell, but they actually have stuff you can buy as well. So the stock refreshes every once in a while, and you can see that in the top middle. Um, but it refreshes in 12 minutes for me, and you can see the armor and the weapons that are available. So some of this stuff is actually high level too, and it has a chance to be pretty good stuff. So the first thing you're going to see here is weapons. So I have a level 58 Bola that is possible. So why am I not buying this? Well, even though it's level 58, which is 30, I believe 30, or no, it's 40 levels higher than my current, 42 levels higher than my current Bola, it is still worse. That's crazy. That tells you how much... They really emphasize the fact of rarity is important. So the fact that this rarity is epic or the quality is epic, it's going to do more damage and a lot of it. So 81 versus the Bola here that does 78 damage. So it's crazy that uh, it does better than a level 58 weapon as a level 16. But that is the case. And that's why I'm using all epics from you know early in the game. And that's something you guys should realize as well. Epics, when you get them, you should be excited. It's like a Diablo 4 feeling, or not a Diablo 4, but an early Diablo 3 maybe feeling, where when a legendary would drop, it felt really, really good. That's kind of the same concept here. Because it is hard to keep up with your combat with like Stonemason, we don't even have the armor skill yet or profession, so we can't even really make good armor yet. This is something that you should definitely pay attention to, is getting good gear as quickly as possible from the episode four when you do have it unlocked because sometimes you will like i said see some pretty good stuff in here and it's as simple as just clicking a button and buying it um when drops are really hard to come by uh and and i you can actually see that by being level 59 in chronopolis being level 40 in hope forest being level 32 in hopeport and only having um you know this gear and these uh these weapons it's just crazy stuff so Really take advantage of the Bladric Armory in Episode 4, and if you do get an Epic, you should be cheering to yourself because you will be using that Epic most likely for a very, very long time. So 
Thank you guys again for tuning in. Hopefully that made sense and it was kind of helpful to you guys. Um, another thing I want to quickly mention though, before we call it a day is that you guys should be taking advantage of the detective profession. I love the detective profession quite a bit and I'll have a video here on that here in probably the next week. Um, cause I know a lot of you guys are still fighting to try to get to episode four, but if you go to the detective profession, they actually have something called crime den raids and they're very, very useful. It's the only way to actually AFK combat. Um, in the early access, they actually had the possibility of standing in these areas and kind of AFKing them. You just have to move your mouse like once every five minutes. That's not the case anymore. Obviously you actually have to click after a fight to get rid of your invulnerability stance. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. If you want, you want something a little more AFK and still love combat going to these crime den raids are very important for that reason. And then also they give you a little bit of a shortcut as well through some of these areas. So I'm not going to talk too much more about that because like I said, a video will be coming out here shortly on that, but this is a very, very big positive about the game for me is that the rarity is such a big deal. So getting a big drop feels good. Um, and there's a lot of games that doesn't, you know, really have that in play. So keep that in mind when you're playing the game and hopefully you guys enjoy uh, your time on brighter shores like I have been. And uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think about everything so far. I'm very curious. So thanks again for tuning in. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel like always, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.